Hello, Lizzie here from Lizzie Curtis Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make Mashiko. And Mashiko is a table quilt or table runner or it could be something that you put on the back of your sofa, on the arm of your chair or sofa. It's just a lovely, lovely, lovely project. <laughs> There's lots of techniques. Um, we're not going to make a full mashiko today. I'm going to make a, a table mat but with all of the techniques that are needed to create this beautiful design. Now this is the pattern that you'll get and I know you can't probably see it very well at all. Um, I've got the real one here <laughs> but this is what the front cover looks like. Okay so this is what you can expect. Now this is probably one of the most complicated and involved and detailed patterns that I have ever done and when you first look at it you think well, surely not <laughs> but it is because we're doing a plaque we're doing patchwork we're doing self binding and we're doing quilting as well so huge amounts of work in this project so I thought I'd make the table mat to show you all of the techniques and in actual fact it really does make a super nice little project if you didn't want to make the whole thing Inside this pattern there's loads of pages so for a lot of it you could you don't need to print it you could just um, down, uh, download it onto your device and read it off the screen but you can print obviously the last few pages I think it's the last six pages that will give you all of the templates that you need to create it. There's nothing hugely complicated it's just a lot of different techniques thrown into the pot. So this is Mashiko. It's beautiful. I absolutely love it. And also um, John likes it too. <laughs> so this is the project. Let me hold, try and hold it up for you. There you go. And you will have seen it on the backdrop when we were creating Matilda. So you can see it's quite a big make. Um, from memory I think it's 50 by 29 and it says that on the front of the the pattern um, and you'll see if I just bring it down now um, you'll see that we've got um, we've got a plique here it's lotus flower there's a story behind that which I'll try to remember to tell you we've got patchwork here again interesting because this is something incredibly exciting that um, I'm launching at um, the end of March time ish depending on when I get everything prepared but it's new templates and I'm giving you a paper template to tide you over and uh, we've got the self binding here because the the fabric that I've used for the main piece and the back are the same they are like a it's, it's, a, it's a linen and it's like a very natural coloured linen it's beautiful and uh, the one I'm using today is slightly different colour but exactly the same quality so we've got the self binding we've got the patchwork here which is just gorgeous obviously I love it we've got the lotus flower here and I'm going to show you how to make that up and if you look very very carefully and I'm not sure there we are if I tilt it like that you'll get the, the the shadows uh, we've got quilting and I've, I've even given you the templates for that it's none of it is difficult it's just a lot of stuff going on and like I say I'll cover it all so just another look at Mashiko I can't see if you can see all that but I'm doing my best <laughs> so I'm going to pop it behind me now and we can have a look at it as we go through the video I'll just fold it up as neatly as I can and pop it behind me there we go and while you're while you're just admiring that I've got my two beautiful Matilda aprons I know you can't see a lot of them but they're behind me as well and you can see on the one here that we've used the lotus flower again on the pockets and on the bib I know you can't see that of the apron uh, Matilda so they kind of match um, and I didn't use linen I used uh, calico because it's uh, more affordable. Um, we've also got the Children in Need Bear and Bag which is our pattern for March um, and this is the beautiful bag that our lovely Gemma Joy made with the curved pocket and the boxed out corners and of course we've got Monkey to go inside. Monkey is our heart and uh, he goes into the pocket there of the bag and I think you'll agree absolutely gorgeous so that's available on the website as well as well as january and february so go and have a little look see in the children in need section and all profits go to children in need so uh, let's start creating mashiko but like i said i am going to be doing a 
um, table um, a table mat rather than that, that great big quilt again because it, that that's a lot of work for me for one uh, one hour video. <laughs> Right, so if we look on the overhead, you can see already I've got all my bits and pieces ready. This is going to be my backing. So instead of self-binding with this gorgeous linen, I'm going to use this beautiful, beautiful Japanese fabric from um, Japan Crafts. I must put the link in the pattern, actually. Uh, uh, Susan Briscoe's um, fabric, which is just delightful. And I've also used her fabric for the... Um, uh, applique and some of it for the patchwork as well and I've used a Stonehenge fabric as a complementary fabric um, so hopefully if I remember I'll put the the links um, on the pattern so I've cut my backing out ready so I'm going to pop that to one side I've cut my wadding ready so I'll pop that to one side there we go so we're left with the main the main pieces now um, this is only part of the map that I'm going to create, this little piece here. Um, I get, I, I, I'm not going to give you the dimensions now. I'll, I'll pop it in the pattern, but it, I'm not going to do a full pattern for this um, mat. This is just a supplementary design for you, just, just to see all the different techniques. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our main lotus flower on this part. And we're going to create three little blocks, if you like, for just the side. OK, that's how we're going to do it. Now, I had a little think about how I would place the lotus flower and I still probably will place it here. But um, you might equally want to put your squares. If we, I mean, it would just have been easy to turn it around. We could put your squares on the right hand side um, and then put the flower here. I mean, that, that would actually balance it out. So, so maybe I'll do that. <laughs> because um, I'm just thinking, I was thinking before I'd have, th I've always been thinking I'd have the patch squares there, but maybe now I've just literally just changed my mind. Now in the pattern, I'll just quickly show you, in the pattern, you get, like I say, various, various templates. You get the templates for the quilting, and there's two pages of those. You get this big template here, which is actually, it's a placement guide, if anything. We've got a wonky square piece here, and all will become clear as I start to show you bits and bobs. And that makes the, the patchwork. Um, and then we've got all of the um, lotus flower pieces here. So you've got everything you possibly need, obviously, plus instructions and lots of pictures. A lot, lot, of, lot of work gone, gone into that one. So the first thing we need to do is to use our placement piece now you have to forgive me here because i'm using my um original original drawings if you like um i'm, I'm not going to cut up my pattern just just for this and this is the placement guide for the lotus flower so bearing in mind you've got well actually we take a half an inch off of our um table mat because of the way we do our binding so you've got to remember that you need to make sure that you've got enough room i would say at least um three quarters of an inch um, in the bigger pattern in the in the big mashiko and um, this is I think I say an inch and a half I'll have to check that but it's either an inch or an inch and a half it's in the pattern just to give you enough space between your seam allowances and literally all you need to do um, is you can of course draw around the whole thing but this is more about a placement guide for your petals and that means if you if you make the whole quilt you'll want your flowers to be this pretty much the same okay pretty much the same um, so I'm putting key points down and that's all I'm doing you can see what I'm doing just key points so if I take that away hopefully if you can zoom in on that um, you can see I've literally put points in points throughout the whole thing and then just here where it meets. So I'm going to get my big um, ironing mat up because the first thing we need to, need to do is place the applique down and stitch that on. I'll just switch my iron on ready. Um, now, the what I've used are charm squares with, I've got Bondi web on the back and all I've done with the five inch charm squares is to just literally draw 
the templates onto the back onto the paper side um, and I thought well I'll just cut one out for you just so you I'm sure you know how bonder web or or any of those type of uh, materials work and it's great because it allows us to literally glue it down in place and um, make it permanent but obviously we need to stitch it for, for to make it look really pretty so just scrape the back I, I'm not a keen fan of scraping the back because it can, can damage your fabric and just get your pieces ready now I have marked what are the outer petals and what the middle petals are and what the center petals are so there shouldn't be any doubts Okay, so once you've drawn on the back of the bonder web and you've cut them all out, you just need to take the paper off. So we've done the first one with the bud, so I can pop that down, although it's not quite in the right place. Um, we've then got the, the middle petals like this, and then we've got the outer petals. So it's just a case of placing them down and getting them in the right order. So if I move all of these out of the way, I'm just going to make sure I've taken the back off. Now, the one thing I will say is that when you put these petals down and this applies not only for this mat for but for any of the lotus flowers that you create you want to just touch the tails so all the ends so these are the ends you just want to touch those together like that and just bring that around and you're using your full template as a guide okay it's not meant to be an exact replication it's just literally a guide of where the points are going to sit it's, it's incredibly useful so the second one goes on like that and again we're just going to make sure that our ends our little ends here will match up so let's just take the paper off this one i'm not desperately keen on scraping because um, i sometimes think you damage the fabric Again, popping the tail down like that and just bringing that up so the point sits roughly where the point of your main template is. So you can see how that looks. I've got a little spare bit there. Um, and then we're just going to pop this one over the top. OK, so that just sits um, on the top. And you'll see that the point of your, your centre bud literally sits right on the centre there and it comes up, as you can see roughly to that point there so now we need to actually sort of glue some of this down okay just some of it because now this is in position I'm very happy with how it looks so what I want to do is secure just some of it this these two outer ones I'm happy with I can go ahead and I'm going to stick them down I'm just temporarily doing the points um, these these um, middle ones here I'm literally as long as I don't move them Let's move the centre petal out of the way just for a moment. I want to be able to stitch these two without these getting in the way. So I'm literally going to um, just iron down these inner points here, which will allow me to, um, to get to this area here of my petal now if you wanted to you can stick the whole lot down and then just um, machine or hand stitch the whole piece but i actually want to stitch all around here all individually even though i'm going to cover it up and with the center petal now i've got everything lined up and i'm really happy with it all i'm going to do is just press that point because once you press that point all of those pieces will lay down exactly where you've placed them because we've glued them down, okay? We've glued them down, but you've allowed access to the, every single shape. So bearing that in mind, I'm just going to pin this one out of the way. And this one, let's pop it here. And there's actually pictures in the pattern that show you this and you might wonder what on earth I'm doing. And it's just because we've made the placement, we've done that, and because we've used a heat erasable pen, then um, uh, it, me it means that if I was to iron these ones on, some of those marks would disappear and it would be a bit of a shame when we've done all that work. So I've literally moved my petals out of the way and I'm now going to iron my outer petals completely down, 100% down. Okay, really super. And make sure you do a good job. Make sure it's all stitched and um, stuck down. And you can see how that looks now. Okay, let's just turn the iron down a little bit. 
Okay, so you can see how that looks. So these two petals are firmly stuck and I'm going to um, do a buttonhole stitch all the way around that shape. And then I'll bring these two petals down, the same again, iron them down, machine stitch down, you can hand stitch of course, and then I'll bring the outer petal down as well. So we'll, we'll get going on that. So I'll do a little bit of it and then you can see what it looks like when I've finished that particular section. So you want to set yourself up on your machine with a buttonhole stitch um, and there might be there might be all sorts of different um, there might be all sorts of different stitches on your machine so you might not want to use a buttonhole stitch there might be something really lovely you can use so let's just have a look at my here we go buttonhole um, see if I can find the right stitch Oh, here it is. It's under applique. <laughs> so you also want to consider where you want the stitches to go in and down, in and down. So have a look at, because you might have ones that go from the left in or the right in. I always use the one from the right in. Okay. And then you just want to set your stitches up. Um, my, I've got a zigzag width of 2.4 and a stitch length of 2.2. Um, so I'm going to start and stop when I, where I know it's going to be hidden. So if we look um, at the side view, I'm literally going starting here on the inner of the outer petal. Yeah, I know it's confusing. Um, which means that the first few stitches you make are kind of like your test stitches. So there we are. And just follow the lines around. There's absolutely nothing complicated about this whatsoever. Obviously you've just got to keep your eye on it. And you want that outside stitch to mimic, if you like, the outside edge of your applique piece, your, your outer petal. Now you don't have to go as fast as me. I'm doing this so it's done quickly for you. When you come to the point, you might just want to consider where you stop and start. And I, I'm, I'm, I can assure you that after a little while of doing these petals, you'll get into a rhythm of where to stop and start. So it's just a case of going around the whole thing, really. So I'll speed up a little. So even though we're covering up the centre part here that I'm coming up to now, you're still going to stitch all of that. Turn if you need to. Now if you wanted to use this piece of applique we're doing now as part of the quilting obviously you'll need to have put your wadding and your backing on before you do this, this stitching let's just get the needle in the right place that's it and then we're just coming around but um, I'm just going to do a little bit of quilting with the templates that I've given you and the, the shapes just to show you, so you can see how that works. So even though we're covering up this particular section of the petal, I'm still doing it. You don't have to, as long as you're confident that you're not going to see at the start end. There we go, super job. <laughs> so there's the first lot of petals done. So let's quickly have a look on the overhead so you can see what that looks like. I'll bring my mat in. 
just turn that over. I've got a little bit of bonder web on there. There we go. I'll do it diagonally so you can see. So all of that is stitched now and it looks absolutely stunning. I've used a very subtle variegated thread. So some of this has a really golden look and some has a really cool white, really lovely whitish tone. So now all I'm going to do is take the pins out of the middle petals and bring those down and bring my iron in and just make sure that those ends still still kiss if you like. Keep, make sure you don't press that center bud but you do want to make sure that this is stitched and um, stuck down. I keep saying stitched, it's stuck. Okay just give it a chance for that glue to melt and go into your fabric. There we go, lovely. So that's our middle petals and you can see I'm taking the, the drawn lines off as well as I'm putting the heat on there and I've left that centre petal well clear of the middle ones. So now all I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to do my buttonhole stitch. I'm going to start here and I'm going to go around all of this around and down just as we did before. So um, you can easily do this by hand, it's quite nice actually, it's quite special. So just pop your foot down and we'll start again. So it doesn't take long and quite honestly I think if you made a set of these mats and it, even if you did that, it's just two I think I think you really enjoy uh, a making them and b all of the techniques. <laughs> There's so many. I surprised myself when I wrote the pattern because I always make the project first. Let me just move that in a little bit more. I always make the project first. Make sure it's going to work. What's in my head is actually going to work. Um, and then and then I I uh, write the pattern. And uh, I surprised myself on how much was involved. Amazing. So even though, like I say, we've stitched over that outer petal, I'm now stitching through all of the layers of the middle petal. I'm just going to snip that little bit of thread there where we started. The middle petal and the outer petal. So just coming up to the centre point. And just turning. If you need to turn your machine, your needle, then just lift your foot out and pivot and move your fabrics. So we're nearly to the, the point of the second petal. It doesn't take long. I'm not expecting you to go as fast as me. So just take your time. You want it to look lovely. The main thing is just keeping your eye on the edge of the applique. Don't look at anything else except the edge of the applique. Turn if you need to, as I've just done. Even though we know now that what we're stitching is going to get covered up, we're still going to stitch it anyway. So all the way around. And back to where we started. So it doesn't take long. Okay, so let's have another quick look on the overhead. Let's do it diagonally again so you can see. So look how beautiful that looks. Oh my gosh, I totally love it. Totally love it. Um, when I stitch that's the centre petal, I'll tell you the story of, of this particular design. It's quite interesting. <laughs> okay, so that's the 
outer petals and the middle petals done. So now we just have to do our little bud. So again, we just flap that back and because we'd already lined it up, it sits absolutely perfectly where I want it to be. So again, give that a lovely iron. And you'll notice because I'm using linen, it, it does crease, you know, it's a natural product and it does crease. And for me, that enhances the design. You, you may not like that look, in which case use um, a quilting cotton, something that you know is not going to crease a lot. So now I'm going to do that centre bud. So this time, of course, our stop and start positions are going to be seen. So try to be as neat as you can. But also, I tend to start right in the centre of the design here. So it's, it's not as noticeable as if we'd started at the point. So let's just pop our needle down again. And away we go. So yes, yeah, so this, this particular lotus flower design is a, taken from a picture from my friend who is Melly Made Designs and she's just been on a trip to India to um, look at all the, the block printing and all the beautiful fabrics being made by those incredibly talented craftsmen out there. And this, this lotus flower design was a, was a tile on a floor that she took a picture of and I saw it and I immediately thought, oh wow, that's going to look amazing as an applique. So I kind of stole it. I did tell her, of course. <laughs> and I'll send her a copy of the pattern as well so she can see how her picture has become a beautiful quilt. She'll be, she'll be thrilled, I'm sure. Well, I hope so. So let's just cut that end. We don't want it snarled up with all the um, all my other stitches. So let's just finish off. Now I don't back stitch or anything like that. We've we've done so much stitching and gluing on this piece now that that is now permanently fixed on there. So look at that, it's absolutely beautiful. So that is the main part, I suppose, of the table mat done. Now if you're going to do the quilt, and I hold it up again at the end of the video if I remember, um, you will see how that particular flower fits in and you'll need six of those on the quilt top and you'll obviously only need one of these on uh, the mat. So the next thing we need to do is to create the little patchwork square. Now um, if you heard me right at the beginning I said to you this is very exciting because this is part of a new launch for me for um, uh, March to 2023 and um, it's a little set of wonky squares um, when you see this they're not they haven't been launched if you're new if you're going to see this in March if you're one of my sewing members you won't see these until the end of March I can get these just to sit nicely um, and they all nest together, even though I'm making a right mess of it. Let me just get this done properly. They all nest together. There we are. <laughs> now you, I know you can't see them very well on my map, but this isn't a cell for these um, particular templates. But they are the wonky square and it's going to create this design. OK, and all we're using is that centre one. So if I take these other three away, because you get four in a set, this is the centre one. I don't know if it look any better on there. I'm not. I'm not sure that it will. I'm looking for something on my, on my desk. But anyway, that's that's the template. But in actual fact, in the pattern, I've given you the paper template, which is perfectly fine um, to to tide you over if you didn't want to get the uh, the acrylic templates. So I've given you that template there. So you're all you're all good to go. Now what we need to make is three of these squares to go down this side here. Okay, I've already done one. And to be perfectly honest, it's good to get one done so you know how all the other pieces go together. So let's just pop that there so we can keep an eye on it. I'm going to change my stitch back to it's the regular stitch, if I can find it. Um, I love my machine, but by golly, you need a, a degree in um, soology. 
Um, I've cut lots and lots of wonky squares out ready. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to get the pieces that I need. And I'm, going, I'm not going to use that one because that's got a, a, a crease right down the centre, which it will put me off. So you need to lay these out on your desk so you get the pieces correctly placed because I've got diagonals here so I need to get those correctly placed and sometimes I um, it blows your mind putting these together there we go so that's how you want it to look um, that there are different ways of using these wonky squares but for this particular design we want opposites so we want those two to be opposite like that and the, the Stonehenge fabrics to be opposite so what I'm going to do because I only need three I'm going to do the same again when you cut these pieces out the pieces all want to be right sides up so don't do right sides together or wrong sides together they all need to be right side up so all of my pieces here you can see are all right side up so that's the first thing to, to think about when you cut your strips because you're going to cut strips about just over the three inches wide to cut these out um, that you can see that they're all right side up okay so that's something I need to stress to you so now I've got the squares lined up ready we're going to stitch these two together and then these two together and then stitch the two pairs together those two those two and then the two pairs together okay so I'll bring my machine in I'll just move my squares along and it's a good idea if you've got a wool mat or well, any mat to be perfectly honest is to lay these pieces out on your desk so you know exactly where how they're going to be put together now the centers of these do have it's a 90 degree angle so once you put the centers together they'll fit beautifully so I'm going to chain piece we've got two right angles on these squares um, these these ones are the right angles that I'm stitching now come from the center not the outer so I'm just chain piecing I remember when I talked to Andy who made these for me he was talking about the end the outer 90 degree angle and I was talking about the center 90 degree angle when we got into right difficulties <laughs> okay so there's the first lot of stitching done so all I've done is chain pieced so I'm going to bring up my little mat and I'll stitch those where you can see them now so you're going to you're going to iron them so they all go the same way so if you're going to push towards the let's call it the dark side but you're going to if you push towards that way you want them all to push that way because when you put them together they actually nest so um set your seam if you want to that's always a good thing to do um, and then you want to press over to the same side every time so we've done those two let's do the other so set your seam press towards the fabric whatever fabric you're going to use your second fabric let's say so set the seam again okay super so I'll put that pair to one side so this is the next pair we're going to put together so all you need to do then is just line them up so if I if I bring them up like that you can see how they look so the wonky square just means that everything is going off at funny angles and I think maybe when you first start to do do it you might have to stop and think just a little bit so all we're going to do is right sides together and stitch down the center and if you've pressed as I've suggested then they nest perfectly just make sure they're all lined up good and then we've got the second pair here 
like that. So you're just going to flip it so it's, it's like that. Or if we had it like we did it before, like that. Okay. And using different colourways and different ways of stitching these wonky squares together gives you a different result. But in the set, if when they come out for sale sometime in March, there's five different sizes. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon, there's four different sizes. Which is fantastic. Now I've got lots of samples to show you. Okay, so there's my two squares done. So I'm just going to now press them. So I'll get my bigger mat up. Now um, you can now trim these to size. So you want to cut these down to four and a half inches square. Um, because even with the best wool in the world and the best stitches in the world, you'll still have to trim down a little bit, perhaps. Possibly, maybe. So it doesn't matter now about um, pushing the seams over. Just uh, do the best you can. If you need to alter that later, then you, you can. You just twist the squares, basically. So let's just give all of these a press. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> so I want to trim these down to four and a half inches, so you won't need to cut very much off at all. You can see hardly any, but it's good to square things up. So your rotating cutting mat is always good at this point. So whatever um, edge you cut, just use that as your benchmark. Now you've got a centre seam, so you might find that your little ruler sort of swivels around a little bit. And that's near enough perfect. Just a little bit there. So there's one. <coughs> just that bit there, I think. This is fine. There's two. A little bit there, a little bit there. I would normally move that around, but I'll give that little cut. There we go. Fine. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so there is a there is a trick to laying these out as well, just for this tablecloth and you know the, the table runner and the, the mat. So um, decide what's going to go in this top corner here. I shall use the Stonehenge. And then you want to take the next one and you want it so it's, um, so this is going vertically, this is going horizontal. So you end up with a horizontal and a vertical here. And for me, they look like little Japanese ha um, houses. So let's just line that one up there. Again, you've got that little sort of shape going on. Can you see that? Okay, so we just need to stitch those together and trim back if we need to. So I'm just going to do right sides together. first pair put together, give that a finger press and then just line them up again. You can see what I'm doing on the side camera there. So just making sure they're sitting together. None of these seams, none of these seams will match. Okay, they'll all be, which is quite nice because they don't need to nest. Makes, makes a nice change. So that's our three pieces put together. Can you see what they look like? So I'll just give that a little press. Just push that over there. There. Gorgeous. It's always good to give a, a little press. So now what we need to do 
is to stitch this to the side of the mat like that. Let's bring it down so you can see at least. And I think that looks absolutely gorgeous. In fact, I wanted it. No, no, I'll keep it that way. Oh, no, I'll keep it that way. <laughs> I think I've stitched them slightly differently. <laughs> so you can see the sort of shape that we're still creating using these wonky squares. I think it looks amazing. So right sides together and just stitch down there. You might want to pin it if you need to. Um, you can pop a couple of pins in just to hold it. There we go. And that will give us that lovely, lovely little patchwork edge, something quite different. even tell you how gorgeous all these fabrics are and it's been lovely working with the linen I do love linen yes we all do maybe it's the natural fibers maybe that's what it is because it's just so delicious okay so there's our piece put in place let's just switch that on and again and we can give that a final press so just push that seam out. Now a little top tip here is lift up the piece that you want the seam to go towards. Lift it up and it will naturally want to sit that way to give that an iron again. Just, it's important to keep doing this um, so you get that perfect, perfect result. Absolutely super. Super, super, super. Just give that a little press as well. I can't help it. I think because it's linen, it just cries out to be pressed all the time. <laughs> okay, so now we need to come to the stage of actually quilting this together. So I'll just bring my spray in. Ooh. So any temporary fabric spray is, is excellent. So I've got my wadding, so I'm going to spray my wadding. Now you want your wadding and your backing to be bigger than your mat. Now the wadding really only wants to be a half an inch. Okay, so we can we can trim this back um, because we don't want it to be um, really, really massive. I'll show you why obviously when I get to it, but just trim that back to about a half an inch. And this is the same for your, your quilt as well. So, I mean, don't worry too much about this being super duper accurate because you're gonna cut it away again. It's just a case of having enough so when you quilt it, sometimes the, the fabric layers kind of shrink back a bit. It depends. There we go. That's super. That's absolutely perfect. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, and then we're going to put the backing on. Now the backing definitely needs to be over an inch bigger than the um, the mat or the quilt, whatever you're making. It, it wants to be, I would say, two inches. Two inches bigger. I haven't quite got that here. But for, for sort of safety, I would go at least, you want, you, the thing is you want a, a good inch either side because we need to trim it back. Oh look, at we've got the <laughs> clamshells, isn't that just glorious? I'm wondering if I've got that upside down. Actually, I haven't. How wonderful. So you can see that your, your, um, your backing is a lot bigger than your little top here and your wadding is that half inch bigger all the way around. So I'm going to be using my original templates, the ones that I created. You'll use the ones that are in the pattern, okay? So yours won't be on brown card, although I do suggest all of your templates should be transferred to card, especially the wonky square. So um, with our heat erasable pen, 
Um, it's just a case of working out how you want this design to go. Now, look, you don't have to do this. This is absolutely optional. <laughs> um, it's just that I quite like a bit of quilting. So I've got six different size semicircles here. OK, um, I'll get them in some sort of order. You can see where I've used them, perhaps. So I've got them in some sort of order and we want to do um, uh, a little bit of sort of... Um, I mean, this would be perfect for Sashko, OK? This, and, and it would be absolutely glorious, just that little bit of hand stitching. What I don't want to do is to stitch on my applique because it's too gorgeous. But also, at the same time, I want to somehow recreate... It's almost like um, the, the Japanese um, gravel gardens where they rake them. But also, I can use these little templates as my guide for my quilting. So I'm just sitting here thinking um, how I want that to look. Ideally, you want it so all your work is going up like that. So I think what I'll do is I'll start off with um, the, the big one. Now, um, we're not going to be quilting the, the applique, so don't forget that. So I'm just going to do one at a time and I'm going to come down the layers. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm literally drawing the lines on, putting my template back each time. You don't have to use all of them. I will, so you can see what it looks like. And even this little piece there will get stitched. And then we'll go down Oops, there we go. So you can see how I'd want you to use the templates. And I'm not using, I'm not doing free motion. So this is something else, although it looks complicated, you're not even going to be doing free motion. This is all done with your regular machine. Now there'll be a little bit of controversy in a, controversy in a minute because I'm going to talk to you about how we start and stop, which some may not approve of. So <laughs> then it's a case of working out, if we get the big one again, and this is my centre line, so I can kind of do a, I can kind of do a mark up here where my centre line is. I think that's probably about right. I'm not sure, it should be over a bit more. So I can pop my template down here and I can get that lined up with that centre line. OK, you'll see why in a minute why I'm doing it like this. So again, I'm drawing that. I'm going to move that over there like that. So let me just mark that on my... So don't forget we're using heat erasable. So I'm going to use that little mark. There we go, that's better. And just mark that in. So although it's only a little bit, let's just make sure I've got it all. There we go. Uh, let's just do the second one. So again, you want to make sure that you've got that same gap all the way around. So again, so a lot of it you won't see, but a lot of it you will. And you'll get the gist of it. You'll get the eye will sort of tell you. It's hardly anything to, to draw there, but we'll do it anyway. Let's just try and keep the distance correct. I suppose it's about a half an inch between each one. And again, like that. There's hardly any there, it's just this little bit here. Look. So we're building up that design. Beautiful. There we go. And just keep, oh, didn't do this one. And just keep repeating. And you might want to do yourself a grid. You can always iron it off. I mean, linen's very forgiving for the heat erasable pen. Batik's not. I always mention that because batiks are a bit funny. And then here, and I think that's brilliant. And then again, we want to replicate it here. Can you see we've made that lovely clamshell design there? And I know we can't see a lot of it, but you, you know, you will get the gist of it. 
So and don't think it's not worth putting a line in because it so is just to make sure even that little bit there you may not see it once it's stitched but it's worth doing it just in case there we are so you can see how that looks and then we're going to do the one above so again we're just going to rest that on there so you can see the top of my clamshell is sitting on the top of my previous ones so we're just going to work our way down so sit it on the top thereabouts try and keep them in an order <laughs> so this is uh, quite a bit of work and you might not want to do any of this but I figured I should cover it because you may not have a clue how to do that beautiful clamshell design. It's so worth it. So all the time I'm resting the template on the curve of that arch, you see. So let's just try and get that level. Do you see how that's working now? So that piece is going to be the centre. And then, of course, we just need to replicate that each side. Whoop. So just go down the sizes again. And, and I have numbered them for you, so you might want to, you know, just keep an eye on the numbers and make sure you're, you know, you're coming down the numbers. There we go. It's just pulling those together, a bit of designer license there. There we go. And that one there. And that's that's it done. That's it done. So although that's quite time consuming, oh my gosh, it's gonna look beautiful. So hopefully you can see that design there. You're not going to want that little mark there. That was just my my guide. I can take that out. And now I'm going to stitch it, and it's a regular stitch. Um, I won't do it all on camera. We'll do some, and then we can uh, you can come back to me when I've done it. It'll take me sort of 15 minutes to do all that stitching. Um, so like I say, regular stitch. So all I'll do is I'll start here, and I'm going to come around here and stop. Now, this is where it gets controversial. You can, if you want to, leave long threads here and here and take the threads through to the back and knock them off. OK, that is the correct thing that you should do. Or, bur you know, bury the, the threads into your quilting at the back. Um, um, if I was going to exhibit somewhere, then that's what I would do. But I'm not. This is just for my table. So you have to decide now what is best for you. OK, now I'm going to do a locking stitch at each end of my row. Now on my machine that makes sometimes a right mess on the back so it needs this bit of bird nesting going on. It doesn't always do that but my machine can do that. So I live with that knowing that I've got to tidy it up quite a bit on the back. You could do one or two tiny little back stitches on the end and the beginning of each of the rows. Again that is up to you. Um, the correct way is to take the th have, keep long threads, don't cut your threads off, Take all the threads on the front through to the back, thread the top and bottom threads together on a needle and bury them into your work. OK, that's the correct way. I thought I should cover that. So let's just get going on this. I'm going to set my machine up to do a lock stitch. I'm also going to set it up so it's on my regular stitch um, position, which is near, middle of the uh, press a foot and I'm taking my stitch length right up to three um, almost like we are hand stitching with traditional quilting if you're hand stitching you take you'd have 20 stitches an inch they're tiny but we haven't got the time to do that so although my I, when I'm looking at this now it doesn't look brilliant but um, you know accurate wise with the gaps in the quilting but you ain't gonna notice it so I start off with a locking stitch supposedly Let's just make sure I do do that. Um, and I'm literally following the lines around and I'm just using a regular, regular um, 
foot. I'm not doing anything special. And then lock stitch. My machine cuts the threads as well. I'm incredibly lucky. Start again. So every row we start with a lock stitch and then we go around. And like I said, I've got a very, very delicate variegated thread in this, top and bottom. It's beautiful. So just up to the edge of the applique, lock stitch just to finish it. So I'll do I'll do a couple of more rows and then I will go and finish this as I say off camera just let the machine work in your favour here just turn it gently just go to the edge of your applique and do a lock stitch so if I take that off the machine and show you it always looks messy before you've ironed the lines but if I show you you can see what that looks like Okay, so I'm going to go away and do all that stitching and come back to you. So I have quilted our little mat. If we have a little look at it, you'll see what it looks like. And you'll see what a difference it makes when you quilt. It kind of lifts the whole thing up. What I've also done is trimmed back the wadding. So it's now flush with my mat, with my mat topper, if you like. With the quilt, if you make the quilt, you can actually take back all of that backing like that and trim along the quilt that way. But because we have quilted right up to the edge of the mat, you probably will have to cut it by hand and I would still fold that back I'd still fold the backing back get your scissors in there um, I wouldn't trust a, a rotary cutter and a blade I would do that by hand um, but the main thing is that you've got a, a line going around your mat that you're going to follow so even if you've got little bits of wadding there don't worry about it um, it's absolutely fine so the next thing we need to do is to trim this down so the backing is only one inch bigger than the little mat that we've just made so you need your rotary cutter and a nice ruler so when I say a nice ruler one that goes nearly all the way down and you want to get it so you're overhanging by an inch only okay so I'll just start here and then I can move my ruler along so just take your rotary cutter be brave and cut all the way down so you just need an inch okay an inch again we'll cut this probably could do with a good press actually I'm just seeing it looks a bit wriggly on screen and this is the final bit so you'll be very pleased that we've uh, nearly come to the end of this but everything that we have done we have um, done on the quilt so if you've managed to do this mat actually you'll manage to do the quilt and you may at the beginning thought oh gosh there's no way I'm going to make that it's um, just too much but actually if you do this in bite-sized pieces all of this is absolutely achievable so let's just finish cutting that okay this is the bit I like the best <laughs> the binding because we're using the backing as the binding and so what you're going to do, if we can come right down on this, you'll be able to see that the first thing we're going to do is to fold over our raw edge to the raw edge of our mat, okay? And we're just going to bring those up and finger press it if you want or get your iron in and press it, whichever you like. And then you're going to fold it again, okay? So you'll see, you'll see some of my um, knots there, my, my loose threads, I need to trim them. I've trimmed the front, but I haven't trimmed the back. Okay, so just tr fold that down so you've got a double fold there and it's lovely and neat just here so okay and then there's pictures in the pattern for that so we've done a double fold and we've taken it right over the edge so actually we're taking a half an inch of our mat away you're then going to turn that corner into a 45 degree as you can see there um, give that a press as well or finger press is fine and then you're going to take this raw edge and do exactly what you just did and that is to take that raw edge up to the raw edge of your mat. So your, your backing is now uh, meeting up the raw edges together there. And then you're going to fold again. And by folding again, you get the most exquisite 45 degree angle. Now don't fret about it because it just happens naturally. It's nothing you need to do that's any special. Uh, special? It's nothing you need to do that's any special than just the folding. Okay. If you've got a little crease there, you could 
take th take this all undone and just take that 45 degree um, fold that we did just a little bit lower then fold raw edges together and then fold again and that then should eliminate that little fold that you've got perhaps in the corner okay and that's your binding and then we're just going to top stitch it now I'm I'm pretty brave I'm going to go around the whole thing um, without pinning and pressing but um, I would like it if you did the pinning and the pressing that is so let's just get everything set up so I'll start where I pinned because I know that's accurate thereabouts let's just move that over a bit and you want to top stitch quite close to the folded edge and I need my pokey tool for this okay so just use your pokey tool to help you get around that corner nicely and you want that last stitch you do to be right near the, the, the next um, seam if you like as you go around the corner and then what I like to do is lift my needle up and just manoeuvre that so when I put the needle down it just falls into um, the fold if you like so it holds all those layers together so we just work our way along And this way of binding is a lot, lot easier than your regular binding. So do give it a go. Let's just move that in a little bit. So as we get close to the corner, I've got my double fold just here. So I'm going to fold that over a 45 degree angle. I'm going to fold my raw edge to the raw edge of my mat and then fold again. And it's just awesome how we get that beautiful 45 degree angle. I'm using my pokey tool. One more stitch. If it catches all of the layers in that corner, in that 45 degree, you're lucky. If not, just lift your needle up and make sure that when you put your needle down it sits there because that's what's holding all layers together it saves a lot of pinning and clipping and it's just lovely okay down the next side get as close as you can to the folded edge of your binding sixteenth of an inch is, is really good so just coming to that next corner just love this fabric so <laughs> we've got the double fold here again so 45 degree fold there's pictures in the pattern for this. Fold again. Way along, finger press if you need to. And then fold again. Okay? And use your pokey tool to hold all those layers together. So although we've covered huge amounts, this is really achievable it's only straight stitching there's no free motion usually put your stitches on your applique that would look just super whatever you use it'll look lovely and just have a go just do just do this mat it's not often i see a full quilt made you know from, from one of my patterns it's very quite rare really but i like to think that some of the techniques and little things I've shown you you'll use um, on another project or give you confidence to give it a go just a little version of it and I have seen that so just one stitch to hold that down 
and then we're on the homeward straight. Still got my very subtle variegated thread in. Gosh, it's just beautiful. I can also see all the, the fluffy threads from my um, lock stitch that I've done on the back. So it all needs a tidy. There we are, done. I'm not going to back stitch, it's just top stitching. It doesn't need to be back stitched. Okay, so there is our fabulous mat. If I move it, I need to press. If I move it a little bit, you can see the quilting. You can also see that beautiful applique design of the lotus flower. And obviously you can also see the wonky squares, which are just incredibly awesome. I just love how they look, really super. Um, so there we are. So that is our uh, Mashko. Obviously, that's the matte version. I'll give you the I'll give you the dimensions of of this centre square when you start off. Uh, that's all you need, really. Now, where's the quilt? Oh, here. So this is the big version. So now you've seen the little one. Have a look at that. Isn't that awesome? So that is possibly what you could make. <laughs> So this is Mashko, sort of rhymes with Sashko. And if you want to do all of that stitching using a Sashko type stitch, then oh, Philly Boots, it would, look, it would look amazing. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video tutorial. I hope you have a go. Um, if you're not one of my uh, online stitchers, my, one of my members, then please go to my website and that will be available in from the 1st of April. So if you're watching this on the 1st of April and you're not one of my members, you can pop to the shop and you can buy the pattern for 5 99 If you're one of my lovely members, then it's free. Hurrah! So thank you very much for watching. Have a super rest of your day and I hope you make loads.